Hi guys, welcome to our channel Let's Decode. During the past several decades, the field of digital signal processing, DSP, has grown to be important, both theoretically and technologically. New technologies and applications in various fields are now taking advantage of DSP algorithms. This will lead to a greater demand for electrical and computer engineers with a background in DSP. So from this video, we will learn some basics of DSP using MATLAB. Without any delay let's start our video. Start by generating standard signals like sine and cosine. Equation of the sine and cosine are like this. Where t is the time vector varying from 0 to n. Create them in MATLAB. Take t vector from 0 to 10 with step of 1 unit. Then store sine wave in xt variable. Using plot function, we draw xt against t. Now run the code. Oops, we got a straight line. Change the step size to 0.1 and run the script. Now it's looking like a sine wave. Decrease the step size further. Ok, now it's smooth wave compared to the previous one. Now store the cosine wave in variable yt. Plot the yt against t oops, we got one signal only, that to it is cosine signal. This is because the new plot overwrites the previous plot. To avoid this, we use hold on and hold off commands, which holds the previous plots, so that we can draw the new plot on the same axis. Now run the script. Yup we got it. But which one is sine and which is cosine? Let's label it using legend function. Here the first signal is sine, second one is cosine. So, we get a note here showing the name of each colored line. Here blue color represents the sine wave, and red color line represents cosine wave. Now we will label the x and y axis. Also give a title to the plot. Run the script. So here is our title, x and y labels. Here our signal is attached to the axis, to move it little we use the axis command. Here we give the limits of each axis to make the plot look better. First two elements represent the x-axis limits and the next two for y-axis. Sorry, MATLAB didn't support zero indexing, make it one. Now signals look nice. We can shift the signal by pi by two. Here we get only a single signal because both the signals overlap. Sine 90 plus theta is cosine theta. If we shift it by pi, we get the plot like this. Also change the cosine signal also. Ok, now make the plot colorful. We can add another argument which represent the color, point and type of line. You can select any combination from the list available on the screen. Now I will give green dotted line with a circle at every point. And for cosine signal we give black dash dotted lines with x mark at every point. Run the script. Yup we got it. Here we can see the dotted line and dash dotted line. We can also change the line width of the line with the command shown. Oh. It is very large. Decrease it to 2. We can change the edge color of the marker. See previously it has black X marks, now they are red colored without changing the color of the line. Also change the marker size. With these available options we can play with the plots. What if we want to plot the sum of two signals? We can do that like this. Add the two signals and store it in variable X, then plot it. Is there any change? Yes we can observe the increase in amplitude, because we are adding two signals. If you didn't understand how it works, you will understand with this now. Change the cosine signal to sine and increase its frequency. Now we understand that it is a combination of two signals. Also plot the original two signals to see how they adds. Without using hold on and hold off, we can also plot them like this. Run the script. These two signals add up and give the resultant blue color signal. Take this to a step further. What if we want to add multiple sign signals of different frequencies and different amplitudes? It will be cumbersome to write the all the signals here, and then add them. Although we write them, if we want to add one more signal to it again we have to change the code. 
Instead of that we will solve them in three approaches. In first approach we will consider a typical C or Fortran approach, that is, we will use two for loops, one to change time instances, and one to change the amplitude of the signals. First we take one time instance then we compute the values of the signals at that time, instance then append it to the final signal. Then we take the second time instance then find the values of all signals and append it to the final signal. Similarly, we do for all the signals. Let's make this in MATLAB. Create a time vector. Save the length of the signal in N. Create an empty vector of size same as time vector. Run the first loop for all the time instances. Create a temp variable with zero value. Now find the value of the signals at that time instance for different amplitudes. Then save the value in final signal at respective time instance. Run the script. Yup we got it. Although it's possible, this is the most inefficient approach in MATLAB. Coming to second approach, we will compute each sinusoidal component in one step as a vector, using the time vector t, then add all the components using one for loop. Do this in MATLAB. Create a time vector. Create a vector with zeros of size t. Run the loop for all the amplitudes. Compute the signal with respective amplitudes, then add it to the final signal. Run the script. Yup we got it. Let's get the first plot also. Both are same. Clearly the second approach is better, with fewer lines of code than the first one. Now coming to third approach we use matrix vector multiplication for which MATLAB is made. We can graphically show the whole process like this. Now let's make few changes to it. Take the amplitudes out as shown below. If they do matrix multiplication, we will get the same result again. Now take sine out of the matrix, which represents the sine operation for all the elements in this matrix. Also take 2 pi common. Now this matrix can be obtained by multiplication of time row vector and amplitudes column vector like this. If you didn't understand just take a paper and do the process from bottom to top, you will get the result as we saw previously. Now we just multiply this in MATLAB to get the output. Run the script. We get the same result as the previous results. This is the most compact code and the most efficient execution in MATLAB, especially when the number of terms is very large. Now change the amplitudes to 10. Also try for 100. In this case the signal is sharp. Now create a function to sum the signals. Function with output xt and inputs time vector and number of amplitudes. Amplitudes are from 1 to n xt is the matrix multiplication of the respective signals as we discussed previously. Now we can directly call the function like this. This is same as our previous output. Also try for different values. That's all for this video. We will meet you in our next video. Thank you for bearing till the end. Stay tuned to Let's Decode for more such videos.